Hi, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of uh, Explorers Month. Right, this month we are focusing on Myanmar, also known, known as uh, Burma. Right, um, so before we actually begin proper, um, there's something uh, just to introduce myself a little bit as well. Uh, my name is Jay. I am going to be the host for tonight. Uh, I'm from Singapore, and so you could say I'm like kind of connected a little bit. You know, Southeast Asia with with uh, the the country that we are going to focus uh, for today, uh, and the organization intercultural education. We are all about making people globally minded. We want to uh, make people become global citizens. And we're just thinking because of COVID, people cannot travel. Um, you know, you cannot go there to experience the culture. So we wanted to bring to you uh, a new perspective. You know, we invite locals to share with you what is it like in their country, um, what kind of cultures do we have, what do we even mean by cultures. And uh, in case you are wondering, I have this piece of uh, item over here. What is this used for? Uh, what we're gonna do with it? Stay tuned to find out. All right. Uh, so for this particular one, it's called Burmese culture in sixty minutes. All right. So we're gonna learn a little bit about this very interesting country. Uh, you From two weeks ago, you have heard about the, the political situation, the protests going on. Uh, this session, we want to learn more in depth about uh, the, the, the culture, right? about what makes, what makes up Burma right? or Myanmar, or what are the people, um, what are their uh, different you know, uh, practices uh, and, and stuff like that. So without further ado, I'm not a star. Let me invite the star for today. And that's my good friend, uh, Isan. Yay! <laughs> Thank, you. Thank, oh, you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming over <laughs> <Again>. here. <laughs> yeah, so two weeks ago, you're here on a more uh, serious yeah. topic. Uh, today we're gonna try and be a bit more light-hearted. I'm right? excited. I need yeah. that. <laughs> awesome. And uh, if you are um, in front of the computer or iPad or what's or phone, uh, feel free to ask any questions. Right, put it in the chat box in YouTube or or Facebook. Uh, we'll be answering as we go along. Right. Uh, if you have any questions about anything about uh, Myanmar. Uh, Isan will try her best. I will try my best. <laughs> I'm not an expert. I'm grew, I grew up from it. So I'm just going to be giving you my perspective mainly, which is hopefully will be more than enough. And if you want to find out more academic, academic or like more, you know, uh, insight, then uh, go do some Google. <laughs> <laughs> we will be <laughs> able to give you some, maybe uh, Isan will be able to follow up with some uh, uh, resources yeah. <laughs> uh, in, the, in the comments later, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, right, so I'll let's let, let's just begin. Why don't you introduce yourself to uh, our audience? Hi, my name is Isen. I have um, I was here last week, just last week, talking about what is going on in Myanmar, and I, I I'm from Myanmar, and I've been in Hong Kong for more than seven years. So Hong Kong is my second home, and I am a research assistant from Hong Kong University, and that's all about me. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Uh, we'll go more in depth because uh, I also heard that you know, uh, 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 Burma, uh, Myanmar is very uh, diverse place, yeah. right? So you're not just belonging to one uh, ethnicity, and mm. you have a multiple identity as well, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so we will talk about that later. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Uh, all right. So let's uh, let's begin. Why don't you know before we talk about the all the uh you know, whatever well, we you start talking about food and festivals which you know you guys at the camera you cannot smell you cannot taste um we, we gotta start off with the the map right yeah. or like uh where exactly is, is Myanmar. Myanmar yeah yes because that's one thing that I always experience here in Hong Kong whenever someone asks me where are you from I'm from Myanmar and most of first of all they don't really know where Myanmar is what Myanmar is they're like hmm. Burma, they don't. They sometimes they still don't get it, and then I would be like Mintin with my bad <laughs> Chinese that they would understand, and they would be like, oh, I where it is. They 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 don't really know where in the map, so I would have to tell them like, oh, actually, it's very close to Thailand because most people know Thailand. So maybe we can just sort of like have a quick like um uh, you know crash course yeah. on geography. Yeah. 
just to get everyone in uh in front i uh, uh yeah where where what a border country you know how does it look like right uh so let's go over to the uh to this uh to the slides and let's take a look at the, the map oh we look so, mm. this is what the map look like and uh so as you can see uh in I can't really see <laughs> it looks like uh chicken leg to me uh, yeah you can say that <laughs> or it also looks like for me for uh, to put it in a more poetic way it looks more like a kite <laughs> yes okay <laughs> well as you can see uh, we have a magnificent like glacier up in the north which is something that most people don't know we have in Myanmar um, because Myanmar is a hot country so most of the time they think uh, it's just dry land but actually no we uh, up in the north we have really beautiful uh, glacier snow-capped mountains up in the north and we have a beautiful like coastline in the west and in the south and we also have the beautiful like uh, because uh, ARBD like the the Eabudi, which is the longest river in Myanmar, it ran from the north to the south and uh, go down into the Bay of Bengal into the you know Admin Sea, and where you will see uh, the beautiful Delta region where it is like the most fertile, uh, fertile like soil in the country. So we grow a lot of rice there, and we also have. Uh, in east, in the east, we also have Karan Hill and uh, Shan Hills. So really a mixture of like beautiful like scenery, mountains, sea, and yeah, snow-capped mountains. Wow. Yes. So so you know yeah you talk about Myanmar. Uh, I grew up with the knowledge or, or like uh, with the understanding that Myanmar is just like hot and flat and tropical. Uh, but you're saying that they actually have snow-capped mountains. You yeah. know, Southeast Asia and Yes. snow cap mountain doesn't it doesn't actually uh it doesn't actually uh, make any sense for me <laughs> growing up in southeast asia uh and also the south is like uh you say that fertile land uh where you have grown rice you know to me i always thought uh, Th thailand rice is very famous but i never knew that myanmar rice uh there, there's also rice farm in myanmar uh so now let's actually let's take a look on the google map shall we uh, so that you know you can actually uh, take a more 3D tour about uh, about Myanmar before we talk into the proper culture. Yes. So um, I'm just gonna we're just gonna look through Google Maps so that we can just take a virtual tour of the country. So I'm just gonna take you to see what does it mean by when I say we have a beautiful snow-capped mountain. So up here, really. Far in the north, we have Kagaborazi, which is apparently the highest peak in Southeast Asia. There is a really good documentary from National Geographic where the team of uh, photographer and uh, cine cinematographer, like videographer, uh, they try to make it to the summit to measure the altitude of the peak so that to find out whether it really is the highest peak in the in um in southeast asia but because no one has it's not like mount everest where like every, a lot of people have been there and it's very popular but here not a lot of people have been there so they didn't succeed it is a really good documentary i recommend it and let's see look at this pictures beautiful snowy mountain and uh, this is the scenery from from the no novel fantasy novels that i used to read in my childhood and i always wanted to go to this region it is day my dream i don't know if i can make it up to mount K uh, kakaburazi but at least i want to visit these uh, beautiful villages covered in snow and be like i am staying in myanmar <laughs> So and then we can uh, go back down to the south. May I want a little too far? <laughs> and uh, here, beautiful 
coastline and one of the most beautiful uh, most popular beaches in Myanmar is Muay Sang and um, it's very popular with um, Burmese domestic uh, tourism and you can see why it is famous because you can see miles and miles of uh, beautiful white sand beach and uh, this vast sea and um, I have all those we have these beautiful beaches in Myanmar. I've never been to uh, to those places. Um, I've never traveled in my country before I left uh, my hometown. And the first time I've been to a beach is when I was when I get to Hong Kong, and like the, the that was my first experience being on the beach. Is I think it's the uh, deep water bay. <laughs> So yeah, that was that was fun, and I hope to like go see my own uh, beautiful beaches one day, and then maybe I can take you to. Well, here you can see the delta where like so many tiny rivers going into the sea, and these lands just you will see if you are there, you see all the rice field and just so beautiful. And here, of course, the um, most commercialized city in Myanmar and the most uh, the biggest city in Myanmar Yangon um, and well I will take you to my hometown called Daidong it is in Karan state beautiful place so this is my hometown <laughs> and you can see there's a river at, that this is where I used to like after school uh, my grandma used to have a farm right uh, next to the river and I would go and help with her in the evening after school and I would play in the river so it's just a beautiful beautiful town and I miss it <laughs> so yeah that is um, I guess this virtual tour is um, done and um, you can see a bit of um, Myanmar from the Google Maps I see. Uh, if there's one thing that uh, I learned, right, is that uh, first of all, you know, Myanmar is bordering uh, India, Bang uh, Bangladesh, China, uh, Laos, and Thailand, and it's such a long country, right? And um, so I'm guessing that it's like there are a lot of influence from all these different countries, and and um, and the, maybe the question I would like to ask, and in fact, like if you are a uh, viewer right now on live, you can also ask questions uh, on the chat box. But my, my first question to you is like, uh, is there even such thing as a Burmese culture, you know, given that there's so many influence or like so many ethnicities? Yeah. Uh, would you say that, can we even say that as a Burmese culture, <laughs> like the title right now? I mean, yes. Because um, the Burmese culture, I guess today we are talking more like broader yeah. and also include other ethnicities and uh, stuff like that. But like B Burmese culture, as in uh, the Burma mm -hmm. themselves, is uh, one of the um, one of the ethnic group in Myanmar, and they do have their own like, festival and their own traditions that don't share anything with uh, other ethnic groups. So yes, I would say we do. You would have a <laughs> Burma oh, yes, okay. but then but then this topic I would say is more broad broad in broader in a sense where we cover the whole country mm. and um also include other like um ethnic city like my Korean people mm. and um we were just talking about the Kachin uh in, up in the north and Kachin hills and you know mountains. So yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, I see, I see. But cool. this, I guess the title just sort of like to make it easy <laughs> for us. Yeah, but also now that we're on the topic of like, you know, Kachin, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, that other ethnicities, um, maybe it's good to show, show, in fact, me, I have no idea like where they are really located. Um, and uh, maybe that would be a good idea to share with our audience, you know, different, like where, what, what are the different ethnicities that are inside uh, Myanmar right now. So um, up in the north generally, so this is very generalized sort of map that you can see. Uh, up in the north we have Gachin people, we have um, 
we have the Qin people, and we also have Shen up uh, in the east, and we have Karen down southeast where I came from, and then we also have um, like uh, Rakhine people in the west, and we have Qin and Naga people in the west as well. And then so this map is just sort of um, this map is just a general sort of um, map, but then in reality, of course, people are very uh, live like mixed, you know, in, in Korean state, you will see other ethnic, uh, ethnic groups like Wa, uh, Bo, and uh, Shan, uh, what else, like Mon people, and all sort of people mixed together. Mm -hmm. Like even me, I'm a mixture of Burmese and Korean because like in my hometown, although it's in, uh, located in Korean state, yeah. the people who live there are a mixture of Mon, uh, Shen, Bama, Karen, and it's mm. all mixed. So we can't just uh, say like, oh, up in the north, these are the people who live yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, in the south, these are the people who live there. Yeah. So it's uh, sort of like a... I mean, people are moving around as yeah. well, right? And yeah. and let's say to someone that like a foreigner like me, right? Uh, uh, when we talk about like Kachin, Mon, uh, they, I mean, I have, I don't have any visualization of how they look like. Maybe do, mm -hmm. do you have like any like pictures that you can show me? You know, like uh, very different people, or like yeah. you know, like in terms of dress and stuff. Like Lucky that. for you, we do. But um, <laughs> I can show you some of the unique um, um, culture and dress and attire of the people, of course, and you can just take a look at the what they look like. So this is the Kachin people who lives on the um, in the north, and um, yeah, look at their look at their attire with the hat where it's, it's very unique and very like they have those silver sort of uh, dangling thingy which I don't know how to call, <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's just uh, like very beautiful and very colorful, and men also wear their own traditional. Um, uh, clothing, mm -hmm. and you will see like them wearing a uh, in their um, traditional attires in their most special like call, they call it Mano uh, festival. That is, I I believe that is like um their um like New Year oh, maybe okay, um okay. festival. And we also have where this is the um, for all people. So I. I have been to Shan State quite a lot, and I have met with a lot of people uh, in that region. Most of the time, they, they wear like black uh, clothes. They are, they are like most of them are farmers, so they farm. So like black sort of help them with like getting dirty and you uh -huh. know uh, being soy and everything. But then they do wear those the most like colorful, beautiful hat. Um, uh, scarf, uh, men and women, especially women, you will see them like so beautiful, like simple, like black attire, but then really bright, colorful. Um, they call it, I think they call it like dragon head or something like that. Yeah. I can see why. I can see why. <laughs> like very practical. You have a very black, uh, black attire because of the work, but yeah. then they still want to make it very distinct. Yeah. With the yeah. Dragon hat. Oh. And this, and we also have this is Rakhine traditional uh, clothing. Like I mean, it is closer to Burmese uh, clothing, but they also have their own way of wearing their scarf and doing their hair, their updo, and the men they have the hair scarf tied in a different way. And they have like in Myanmar, a lot of everyone wear tamain, right? And every ethnic groups have their own patterns. Mm -hmm. So based on if you are Burmese, based on the based on the the pattern of the tamain, you can tell if it, it comes from um, from Kachin or from Chin or from Burma or oh. so yeah. For us, we can tell, but I guess it it would be hard to explain for me because I don't know all the basic. Uh, uh, traditional background yeah. to that, and for Mon people, they wear uh, white and uh, white top, and then um, red uh, undergarment like mm -hmm. longji and tamain. So you can see it's also like super beautiful, really elegant, and look at the longjin is the uh, for men, men, men. and yeah. then tamain is for the woman. woman. Yes. Okay. And this is Shen uh, ethnic uh, a 
attire, and this is a uh, one of the most uh, popular uh, traditional dance called peacock dance, and they, she's just performing. You can see again very colorful dress with the head um, a head scarf, and we also have Badang, the long neck woman uh, in in Myanmar, and um, yes, uh, which is. Uh, they they wear this like really heavy um, copper rings around their neck, which gives um, then sort of like make their neck look longer. This is their uh, the their way of being beautiful. Mm -hmm. This is perceived as the the longer they look, the more beautiful it is. But she is beautiful there too, so yeah. <laughs> I think this is quite a uh, 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 well known or uh, an international. Uh, I mean, international uh, yeah. people know of this yeah. long neck. Right? Because because of Thailand, I think in yeah. Thailand uh, you can go and visit like the national park, which is a bit dodgy, <laughs> but yeah. Um, but then even also in Myanmar as well, if you go to Inle. They, they, you can uh, take photo with them for photo props and stuff like that. People don't, um, I think especially younger women don't uh, wear them anymore, uh, only for like older women, yeah. And this is uh, current um, attire, so um, again, colorful uh, clothing, colorful patterns, and much more um, uh, well, um, give you a lot more freedom. Yeah. I would say. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I would say yeah. it's just a very long piece of. Yeah, clothes. I was actually I was thinking like whether if I should wear my Korean dress tonight, but then I think it would be too much, so I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but but I do have pictures. I do have a Korean dress where like we have a lot of like a long thread hanging and really beautiful. And if you are like I just believe now it's not anymore like in like if you are uh, you don't wear black if you are a single woman like only um married woman can wear black and you can wear any other colors except black oh. yeah and and this is like one of the like most famous uh, sort of like tribe in Chen state and you can see they have um the ink Mm. Like tattoo on their face so that the legend is that like in the past uh, the Burma kings we go to the frontier area in the like in Kachin, Chin or like those uh, and kidnap tribal women to be to make them to turn them into their co concubines and you know their servants or something like that and if you are beautiful the more beautiful you are the higher at risk of being kidnapped by the Burma. So what they do is this is a way for them to make themselves ugly. Or some also say that it is for them to sort of if they get kidnapped, if their family when they reunite with their family, the family will recognize them. So but then we obviously no one really know the reason behind it, how it started of course, but only a few handfuls of women have this ink uh, on um, face tattoo now mm -hmm. and it was banned actually uh, in uh, in the 70s um, uh, by the government yeah. so younger women of this tribe don't have any mm -hmm. face tattoo anymore only like 40 and older have that so that is quite a shame yeah. I think it's yeah. I think it's also important to let the audience know like you know these uh, things are kind of in the past uh, but right now modern times is not uh, happening mm -hmm. uh, with the with the uh, ladies and uh, right now yeah. yes yeah no no <laughs> one's kidnapping us like no Burma no Burma yeah. King <laughs> yeah, yeah no Burma Kings uh, anymore and you can see one thing you can say about our attire for all ethnic people for everyone in Myanmar is that it is very colorful you wear so many like different color mix it's just so bright and beautiful different patterns everywhere you see your eyes are just like pfft. Wow. Um, so that is one thing, and like I love colors, as you might see, yeah. because I always wear colors. Um, but in Hong Kong, a lot of people just wear like black or gray or like really, <laughs> you know, and it's so different from my culture. <laughs> Very dark. But I have, I have a, I have a 
uh, the next question is like I look at you know since from the pictures I seen that there are a lot of these like a uh, some kind they look like a makeup you know or, or pictures or like you know like um uh, this brownish uh paste over here yeah what exactly is that okay I I thought you might be interested in that so that's why I brought this. <laughs> and i'm gonna tell you what it exactly mm -hmm. is so that uh, the thing they're wearing as you can see the thing that they're wearing on their face is called the nakka it's burmese traditional makeup and every woman almost every woman not me <laughs> almost every woman swear by it in in myanmar myanmar is a very hot country so well in the past when there is no me of getting like sunscreen or like any makeup to protest uh protect your skin so this is a way for a woman to you know look good and also at the same time protect their skin and keep their skin bright and shiny yes so this is like a natural sunscreen yes and a face uh, well skin protection yes and this is this is the uh, piece of wood it is it is a wood type of wood called the nakka. Oh. That is where the name came from. From and it's grown in the in the middle uh, part of the country. And like if if you smell it, it smells a bit like sandalwood. Yeah, it's a it's a very unique, it's very fragrant yeah. and very yeah. I I love the smell. And, and when I was younger, my mom will always make me wear the nut car before i go to school when i wake up as soon as you wake up you have to wear the i mean uh wash your face first and then have to wear your the nut car if, if you don't do that you are seen um like as and feminine like oh. every woman has to just sort of like wear it it is sort of like a tradition for us and even if you go to a school mm -hmm. um this is part like I mean the the teachers will not tell you to wash it off. In fact. No, teacher will tell you to wear wear them. <laughs> if you don't wear any the any the nut card, they will be like, why are you not wearing any the nut card? So it's like a must. I don't know about everyone, every school, but like for my teachers, it was like they, like that for me. They yeah. actually encourage you to uh to to put it on. Like, yeah. Okay. Do you want to try it? Yeah, of course, yeah. of course, of course, of course. Like <laughs> okay. I don't know how this piece of wood can turn into a. You have to chew it. <laughs> Just get it. <laughs> okay, so I have um I have the nut car um here, and I've had this for like many years. I never really use it. I I'm, I'm so glad that it's coming coming in handy for me today. Um, and this is the stone that we grind the the nut car on. And in every Burmese household, like if you go and visit, if there's a a woman in that household they will always have this stone in their like makeup table and sometimes it's three times bigger than this and it's huge and thick and heavy but this is a portable site so you can take it wherever you go and there's a travel site uh, a travel but it's quite heavy <laughs> it's, it's still heavy you have to it's, it's still stuff. quite yeah it's like a stone right yes okay so now what you need is you don't need much you just need water the nut car and a brush, a clean one, of course, mm -hmm. to uh, blend it. So because every makeup you have like different brush, yeah. you know, you can, you can use your toothbrush too. I, I must confess, I, I don't know anything about makeup. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna listen to you. Really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So listen. you just uh, pour some a few drops of water so it, it doesn't overflow, and then you just use it. If you see the bumpy bits, it you have use it so much it become uh, smooth mm. then you won't get a paste uh, easily mm. so if you use the more bumpier part it's easier to grind and easier to get the paste so just, just use your arm it is a very good exercise for your arm as well and women believe it gave you like really beautiful strong arms uh, as well at the same time you can get like beautiful skin golden skin um, so <laughs> You know, works for everyone. Do you wanna? Do yeah, you wanna let me try. Yeah. Let me try. You have. You seem. To, you seem to have okay, a strong arm. So uh, uh, in uh, no time we have. I want my beautiful skin. Well. <laughs> Quicker. Yes. Nice. Okay, we're well, we can. Oh, okay. And then we can put it in a bit more. 
Okay. So, okay. It's okay. So grinding. It can, it can overflow. Oh. The thing is, like, it has to overflow, and and in a, a lot of the household, you will see like the uh, paste on the makeup table and everywhere. It's a messy business, but it's nice. It shows that you have been using it a lot. And, For a long time. Uh, oh, there's a smell coming out of the... Yeah. Yeah, so. You want a consistent, like, um, tasty... Wow, my arms. <laughs> you need to work, you need to work more. Yeah. That's why Burmese women have strong arms. <laughs> Okay, I think this is enough. Okay, so and then what we do is, of course, it's, it'd be best if we have um um if we have mirror, okay. but we don't. So I'm just gonna try on me then. Okay, like, so you can yeah. uh yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> so first you have to put a base. So like on your whole face, I'm just gonna do that. <laughs> Uh, it's good for oily face too, so it would. Uh... <laughs> you just mentioned that my face is oily. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it is good for oily face. I'm... Oh. Okay, and yeah. Yes, it's very cooling. It is very fact. cooling, right? Mm. The face is so soft. <laughs> Maybe because I, I, I now you already got like Burmese uh, golden skin. Okay, and I'm just gonna grind a bit more. Okay. So if you are just joining us, this is the uh, we're doing this thing called the Kanaka, uh, which is a well supposed to be a sunblock, natural sunblock. Uh, skin like a uh, um, well moisture I don't know like a uh, conditioner um, mainly for uh, females right if yes we, we believe it protect us from sun UV ray from sun uh, from you know harsh sun because in Myanmar is so hot and you need to find a way to protect yourself and apparently this is also filled with uh, vitamin E which is good for your skin oh, yeah, so, yeah look at you you already like uh, beautiful golden yellow so now we're gonna make patterns so you can see like the square uh, pattern they make sometimes you can have a, a leaf um, pattern as well you can be creative you know just you know, let your imagination run wild um, so I'm just gonna I'm do ready. a basic one can you knock mine yeah and uh, maybe let's go for no like square is easier <laughs> okay there Okay, and the other side. There you go. Beautiful. Oh. <laughs> and uh, what we do is we also put a, a line on the nose and then make it a circle on the top. Beautiful. Yes. Wow. No. So this How does it feel? Uh, it feels. Wait. I realize that you know, I if I wear glasses with okay. it, but okay. Um, yeah, it's very cooling again, like very cooling effect. If I imagine like if I'm in a hot country, like uh, uh Myanmar and Singapore, like it, it actually cools you off. Yes. Right? And, and once it dries, okay, wait a minute. Like I feel like it's cracking. <laughs> I feel like the, my mouth here is cracking, but um. It, it 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 there's a nice pleasant smell as well, yeah. and uh, it's it's really quite interesting. I I really like the feeling. Yeah. Uh, but is 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 this um for mostly females? So so guys don't do that in Myanmar. So little boys like um kids we wear it if whether despite the gender so boys or gir or girls but then at a certain point men stop wearing them and men don't really wear the neck car but then women we be like expected to wear them or not expected like to wear them mm -hmm. and it's, it's more acceptable because men do have to sort of um adhere to their certain like gender roles um where men are strong and they are the breadwinner of the of the family mm -hmm. so in in our burmese culture men and women have the sort of um divided 
role where woman is to stay at home to uh, look after kids and to cook for the husband and wait for the husband to come back and wear the neck car and be pretty and yes so men don't wear a man can be smelly but woman <laughs> can't <laughs> wait so yeah so this oh okay uh uh, so you're saying like boys when they're young they still wear it until a certain age and then like there's se gender separation uh so this becomes more like a female this is more like a female and child kind yeah. of thing yeah right and guys doesn't wear it and yeah. uh the yeah so so um if yeah if, if you if you are in the audience if you'd like to ask any questions please feel free to do it in the chat okay if you want to know how it feels or you want to uh, know what the pattern means or whatever uh, feel free to type in the in the chat box all right we'll be monitoring the chat box and uh we'll be sending answers uh questions to uh yeah. isan as well right uh so then my other my question would be that uh, we talk about like male being like the macho breadwinner mm -hmm. um so is this still a very very traditional mindset? Uh, uh, how how about the um in the workforce? You know, like uh, do can girls actually uh, work in uh, yeah in the normal you know like it's engineering or, or, or doctor? I mean yes. Uh women like we we see more and more women going out into the labor force and be more active in earning money and but then still uh, because Myanmar the, most of the population still live in uh, rural area so the rural in the rural area in my hometown like if you after you're married you don't you stop working you depend on your husband and the husband is the one who brings money in Myanmar uh, gender inequality is quite high and in the workforce men stay are a majority like 80 percent of the workforce is men and just the 20 percent or less it's women yeah. and so we, there's it's not just you know the workforce it's also like it, if you look at like professional um feel uh there are a lot more men in you know than like in different um professions than women and like um in education as well it's also like very unequal where i don't know if it's stay the same but like when i was growing up uh we if you our high school like our education system is very dependent on the marking system so depending on the mark that you get on your high school examination you go to a different like uh, certain like institutions like for university so you the highest one being uh, university of like medicine engineering nursing school and so on and if you want to go to those school as a woman you need to score higher marks than men sometimes if a man have to get like 100 marks to say for example to get Mark 100 get marks on... then women have to get Good. 115 or 120 so it's really it's set up for women to fail basically yeah. and so sort of like aim for lower and that sets us up to be sort of like a lower citizen in our country and culturally like women and men don't mix together mm. you know and <clears throat> like men's like we believe like in our culture we believe men has home which is the their like sort of their aura men's aura which can be described by touching like women's underwear or uh <laughs> so the, yeah so in sort of like a woman's that seems like a you know you know lesser mm -hmm. um citizen of the society it's a very uh, gender unequal and like yeah. uh the, the the males have more supposed to have more power uh, mm -hmm. uh, because of something like a pawn that is in them when they are yeah. born yeah like an aura that is like oh yeah. this is a man aura yeah so what we're seeing like is now with the protest that is going on in Myanmar, mm. like we see a lot of young women being in, in, in the front line and they are really fighting for their freedom and like voicing out. And it's really encouraging to see that and to see this 
could be a, a chance for us to change for the better. Mm -hmm. And we see like uh, there was uh, a few weeks ago, uh, oh, yeah. women uh, were hanging, women were hanging there like uh, long uh, to me on the street above the you know above the street so the soldiers who are like most of them are misogynistic so believe that women and the underwear is you can't shouldn't pass under women's underwear or like longji to me so they were they took hours trying to cut them down and like it is it has become sort of like a protect uh protection for protester and it was quite interesting to see that and young men are also just sort of wearing um, to main and just sort of protesting and just seeing like, okay, this is a change, the, the time we recognize the power, power of mm -hmm. women. And mm -hmm. I have really great hopes in the future and in our generation. For the younger people, right? Yes. The, it, it's like, uh, so when you mentioned something, it's really interesting, like uh, the underwear hanging out there and the, the older, well, the, the policemen are probably older as well. Yeah. They're really afraid of touching or going underneath mm -hmm. because uh, it will break that aura. Yes, right? that would, would break their phone or whatever. And like my mom will always uh, tell me not to touch my brother's head or just touch in, we hurt their phone or whatever, something like that. And we, I grew up with that belief and we don't even mix the clothing together to wash or anything men and women clothes we separate them so it's very uh, inconvenient <laughs> and uh, especially for women of yeah. course and yeah it's degrading as well. yeah and wow that's like really really very uh, distinct separation even the clothing have to mm. be separated uh, and so I, 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 there is a comment. Uh, so thank you to uh, Rika, Rika Tora. What are the most common roles that women work in uh, Myanmar? Yes. So um, women are in every uh, field. You, you see them everywhere, but then most of them are in the so supporting roles. So like assistants or like in admin um, works mm, uh, clerical. they would be doing like clerical and admin stuff but then if it, at a higher managerial level like you don't see enough women and um, you see for nursing like women will go into like if they can't if they want to get a career in medicine they will go for nursing instead of going for doctor and uh, like we don't see any woman in engineering mm. like anything that has to do with mechanic and you know machine mm. and stuff like that they didn't and teachers like most of the teachers are women and like lately there's there's been attempts or attempts to try and get men to um apply to for work. being a teacher yeah. because the, the the gender um uh, sort of um very unequal yeah right? but, but then, the balance yeah. is, is not balanced yeah. so yeah those are like where you will see women the most and like factory workers like if the garment factories that is where a lot of women will work mm -hmm. and yeah so it's, 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 uh, it's like this uh like this thing that uh well the education sense is always like oh there, there's this like um belief or rather this weird thinking that oh it must be more caring females are more caring that's why they should do like certain jobs mm -hmm. and, like motherly mm -hmm. taking care right yes. um so uh maybe i'll extend that rick Rekha's question like you know uh, you, so is it very common uh that once you the moment you get married like you're expected to just stay at home um or i think nowadays more and more it is more acceptable for women to work and uh but then it's just that there isn't enough opportunities for women uh even if they want to work so yeah it's easier to to stay at home and uh, be a mother i guess mm. and it's in like the big uh, majority stay is bad like for you to take care of the kids and take care of your family but yeah, we just what we need is we need more 
like woman role model. So like within uh, the last uh, 10 years with the democratic uh, government, we are seeing more and more women in politics and in like uh, successful mm -hmm. business. And that is really encouraging um, for us, for me to see like, oh, women can be successful in our country. And it is, you know, the future that we want for our younger um, I like my niece, I have niece, and I want my niece to have a role model model to look up to, and not just like, oh, uh, I mean, being a teacher is great, of course, but then the choice. I don't want her to think that that is the highest that she yeah. can go, you know, and she could hope for, wish for better, and I hope to have that um, role model mm. for her, and with the current situation with military taking over, we are going to go back mm -hmm. at where men are going to be in power because in military, uh, you don't see women general. You In the pictures, all you see is men and mm -hmm. men in power. And women are just their accessory and their wives and mm -hmm. who look pretty and look good for the pictures. And that is the last thing we need today. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really like going backwards with all these uh, uh, things that's happening right yeah. now. And uh, if... <laughs> It like as a guy that if I have to wear like Tanaka, people will probably look at me very weirdly. Uh, I think now it's, it's now like it's they see it as cute okay. and like you know younger people are much more open minded and men can wear makeup now day too. Mm -hmm. That's why I have so much hope. Like so, I I am so proud of like our younger generation and young kids younger than us. They are much more open to uh, to open their heart to. Yeah things and you know yeah. try makeup and try the nakka and look pretty and you should look good and you should smell good exactly like <laughs> if, if, a man. Yeah, exactly my mom sees this like i think she might call me and like what's going on <laughs> yeah, but, well uh but anyway uh so thank you thank you reka for the great question again if uh, the rest of the audience have any questions please feel free to type in the chat box um but then we you know when we talk about like culture uh, one of the things I always like to ask the guests is, uh, uh, tell me like a, a kind of like a story, a myth, uh, you know, like a, a, that's from your country because every every culture, every country, they have their own sort of uh, very very interesting story, uh, you know, uh, dragons, uh, like uh, I don't know, like fire, and love story. Oh, if I ask you, like Burmese. Yeah. So, <laughs> since we are talking about men's and their aura and the poem, so I thought of a story called Shemuelon and Menanda. So Shemuelon is the name of uh, the princess in our story, and Menanda is the name of the prince in our story. So it's like um, Burmese Romeo and Juliet with a bit of a bit more action and some mythical creatures. So just excited. And I used to do that a lot. I used to. I am like the storyteller in my oh. friend group. So okay, let me see if me. I stick up my like storytelling skill. So once upon a time, long long ago, in um in a place called Danlin, which is right at the other side of Yangon, there was a princess called Shemuelon. She was born when her um. um after her mother passed away in during labor, so the what happened was like they thought she's dead, she couldn't deliver the baby, so they sent her to graveyard for funeral, and then the baby was delivered in the graveyard. Her mom is dead for like I don't know maybe a few hours, um, but then she was born after that. So the father, who is the king was like, I can't take this baby back. He is such a great father because it's like, I can't take this baby back because she was born in the graveyard and it, bringing her back would bring bad luck. They do believe in that sort of superstitions. And um, so he, instead of taking her back to the city, he built her a really magnificent like palace in that place where she was born. And she lived her whole life there with her servants and sort of like in her own bubble, in a snow globe. And she grew up to be a really beautiful prince, uh, princess. Um, and then there was this prince who like, lived in the city and has this magical cane that can summon a uh, mythical creature and monsters and can control them, can tame them. And he 
he heard about this princess who lived on the other side of the river and who is so beautiful, but no one has seen her. So he wanna, but then there's no way to get there. There's no, no, uh, no bridge to cross the river and there's no boat that we cross the river because it's so dangerous. There's a crocodile that lived in the river and and that crocodile is dangerous and no one can like kill them or tame them. He's so powerful. So but then the prince has a secret weapon, the uh, like magic cane. cane. So he just hit the water three times and summoned the king, uh, the river king, the crocodile, and he has to show up and obey the prince. And the prince is like, take me to this princess, take me to Shemui Lun. And, the, and then he ride away with the crocodile to the other side <laughs> to see the princess. And imagine, imagine you are a princess who have left on the other side without seeing anyone or like any man, yeah. uh, you know, before, and you see this man with his Cane, <laughs> right? Of course, you're gonna fall in love, and she fell in love with him right away. And <laughs> I'll be scared if I see a crocodile coming to me, or someone standing on top. <laughs> well, I guess, I guess she's just desperate. I don't know. Um, and so they fell in love, and they had this like beautiful love story for you know a long time. And then there's there's the this one story, and then there's another like storm that's brewing in the river. There's another female crocodile who lives also lives in the river who wanna control the river. But then because the crocodile king is so powerful she can't take control we, yeah. of the river. So what she so she challenged him in a fight and she lost and she has to run away. And but then she stayed like I'm gonna take my revenge. I'm this is not over yet. I'm gonna get you. And so she she is a mythical creature. She has power. She's a magical creature. So she can turn into human too. How cool is that? Um and so what she did was she pretend like an old lady and she um visited uh the princess and asked for a job to be a servant so that she can get the trust from the princess and uh you know, be friend with her and plot her revenge on the crocodile that the prince ride. And the, well, they become friends yeah. and the princess will tell her all about her lover and she know all the secrets. And she, and one day she was like, when is it time that she believes the princess uh, trusts her? Mm -hmm. She asks her this question. So uh, do you think, why do you say he loves you? And she was like, oh, he asked, he let me do anything that I want, I want to do, and he gave me anything that I asked. And he was like, oh, really? Has has he let you sleep on his right arm? And she was like, right arm? Um, no, never. Um, no. Why is that? But if um, and she was like, because in the culture or like in that time in the story. They believe man's poem or like the aura or like the power lies on their his right arm. Like you know, he must have strong. Arm. <laughs> and 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 she was like, no, he has never said. Then he doesn't love you if he has been. A, a man who loves his woman will let her sleep on his right arm. Remember that. And she was like, okay. And the next time the prince arrived with his crocodile, she was like. Um, in the in her bed chamber, and she's like, uh, why do you uh, why do I always sleep on the left hand side? Can I sleep on the right hand side? He, he was like, no, uh, and he was like a bit hesitant, mm -hmm. and she was like, oh, you don't love me, and she was just all like pouty and really angry with him, yeah. cranky and angry with him, and she was like, okay, no, I can't, I can't bear there there so I will let her sleep on the right arm and she slept on the right arm she had a great sleep and uh but then his poem was gone mm. because she slept on it well that's not a good takeaway for women because that makes us feel like we are like I don't know something dirty or whatever. Yeah, like, oh, we'll take so, away the man's uh, power. Yes, I don't know what this storyteller want to talk about yeah. right with and so and then the man did not realize that his aura is gone and he went and ride away with, with his crocodile back to the city. And that means the crocodile who carry him also loses 
power. And on the way to back in the middle of the river, the other female crocodiles just sort of like attack him Ooh. and there was like a fierce fight and like, you know, imagine the King Kong movie with the Godzilla yeah, and King, King Kong, Kong fighting, yeah. something like that. And the, the prince was like trying to hang on it and he he has to, the crocodile king has to be careful because he is on the back, yeah. the prince is on the back and he was like, okay, no, this is not working. Would you, can I swallow you and like, you know, I, I uh, can you stay in my mouth yeah. and so that I can effectively fight and he was like uh can you promise you won't swallow me <laughs> he was like yes he trusted the crocodile they had the sphere of trust and so he went into the mouth of the crocodile and the crocodile they had a fear fight a fight and actually the crocodile king won mm -hmm. and the other female was really injured probably dead or something like that never heard about mm -hmm. her anymore and then the crocodile king was really exhausted. That was a really long fight. Bad and he fire. went to the other side of the river and he was exhausted and he forgot about the prince and fell asleep. And the prince so got suffocated in the mouth of a crocodile for a way to die and and die, yes, <laughs> basically. So and the the next day the princess waited for his her lover yeah. and he never showed up and later she found out about what happened to him and she died of heart broken heart yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and that was uh, basically the story and they had a funeral on either side of the river and the, so at the end like the the cloud or like the because we the connect with yeah the, because we <laughs> Uh, we burn the body, yeah. so uh, the cloud of them connected back in the in the sky, oh, and they reunited okay. as lovers. So this is this is it, the yeah. Burmese Romeo and Juliet. But I think it's like yeah, so so I think the it's a big uh, it's a long story, but yeah. then it also shows like again, even though it's Romeo and Juliet, but it seems like it's the females fought for taking away all the power and stuff, and um and. And talk about like you know female and I like like uh, uh taking power away and beauty as well. I uh, uh yeah. So um yeah um yeah. So actually um we have come to the almost the end of the session. Uh just like to uh, maybe uh, if you have any other questions, now's the time to ask. Uh, but for me, it's it's just like yeah. Uh this this is really interesting story. <laughs> Crocodiles. I really enjoy. I hope I saw it. Way. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, myths and legends, like, uh, there are always many ways to talk about it, yeah. but, but now I always remember the prince going to the, the crocodile's mouth. I can't say which is worse, like, I mean, like, to trust the crocodile, or, the, yeah. Or... I don't know, I think he's, he's, that is, it's bound to happen, because, mm. I mean, he either drown or he suffocate Suffer, yeah. inside the crocodile. Mm -hmm. But yeah, anyway, um, the takeaway isn't that great, now that I think about it again. Like, so the downfall of the prince was, or like the crocodile of the prince was because of the princess, you know, make us feel like, okay, we need to, um, yeah, we need to not respect take away, the yeah, man. respect the men yeah. and like make sure their aura stay with them and with make sure their poems stay with mm. them and yeah, don't touch their hand or like don't sleep on their right hand, which is, um yeah now when i think about it i'm just like wow i that was a story that i used to enjoy <laughs> so that, well back then you didn't really think about all these like uh, it's just really, a good story yeah, though it is a good story uh so i, I think if i have to wrap like uh, wrap up or summarize you know we talk about this uh panaka yeah. that's on my uh face for the past half an hour it's starting to dry up so when i laugh i can feel like Something's cracking. Uh, uh, it's like, golden it's, yellow now. It's yeah, so beautiful. It's a really good uh, thing on my. Yanlade. <laughs> Yanlade. Yanlade. Yes. Uh, what do you mean? It means beautiful, very beautiful. Yanlade. Yanlade. Yeah, Yanlade. Eh. Eh. Yan. La. De. Yes. Okay. Wow. Well, thanks. Thanks for the compliment. But, but that is only for women. So you only say it to women. For men. Um, you don't use that phrase. Oh, <laughs> oh but it's okay. It's okay. I mean, I'll take it yeah. as a compliment. Yeah, we shouldn't uh, also like uh, discriminate language yeah, either, of course, right? Of um, yeah. For women, we can, for men, we say a yang kenne. 
Yan Ken, eh, Yan Ken, Ken. Ken. Yeah. Ken. It's mean like handsome. Oh, okay, okay. I will remember that Yan Ken as in Ken as in Ken and Barbie Ken. Or Yan <laughs> Ken, eh. okay. Ken, yeah. yeah, Yan Ken, eh. all right. Um, yeah, so summarize like Tanaka, we talk about um, also uh, like the, the, the different uh, uh, ethnicities, having the different uh, cost, uh, uh, well, clothing, um, and the whole aura. A very main takeaway for me is like this home aura of men not sleeping on the right side. I mean, um, most people don't believe it anymore, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> uh, this is something that will stick with me like for a long time. And um, this whole gender imbalance that we have, right? Um, and for our audience in, uh, in front of the, uh, well, the computer, uh, the uh, phone, if you have any questions, if you cannot think about it right now, or if you're watching this later, uh, you can feel free to type out any of the comments on the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the comment box below on YouTube or Facebook, and then uh, we will try to respond uh, as soon as we see it, right? Yeah. Uh, so last but not least, uh, uh, for Isan, would you like to tell the uh, audience anything you know you want them to, uh, yeah, want to know about Uyama? There's one thing that you need them to know. Yeah. Well, what I feel like is I just talk about next to the side of my culture, which is not so great. But um, the, Myanmar is so beautiful. It is filled with unique culture, and there are so many things about Myanmar. This is just like a tiny, a tiny thing that I think is interesting, and which I'm pas passionate about: gender equality, women empowerment. So that's why I'm talking about it. But Myanmar is great. The people are amazing and not everyone is misogynistic, so please don't take it uh, the wrong way. <laughs> and that all of us are like, oh, hate uh, women yeah. or anything. No, really, so yeah. yes, I hope if you want to learn more about it, read up on what is um, uh, going on in the country right now and like just educate yourself with, because today is wonderful. We're living in a wonderful age of information and you can just type up Myanmar yeah. and so many information will show up so yeah all right thank you thank you Isan thank you Isan and thank you to Rika thank you for the compliments right <laughs> and uh for the rest of you I like to say uh, a very well it's evening time in Hong Kong so good uh good evening good night and hope to see you soon uh for our next explorers month uh we can check out Instagram uh intercultural education or Facebook ice Hong Kong uh, to learn more about what uh, country we are focusing for the next month all right, but till then, uh, I'd like to say uh, thank you so much, and uh, maybe we can say we want to say goodbye in a uh, firm. Ta ta. Ta ta. Ta ta. Okay. Ta ta. 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 Thank <laughs> you.